Oi, oi, oi. Oh, you caught me. I was taking a break, so I came over to Randy Land so I could see if I could get into some mischief. So you're here, so I might as well show you something else because it is time for the next fun-filled episode of the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Let's hear the hooray! Hooray! And all you people out there who are watching this stuff, I'm sure you already subscribed, but do you know there's something called a notifications button? You gotta click the notification thing so you get alerted when, when more episodes come? I knew you knew it already. So, I mean, I, I never say this stuff. All these other videos I've watched are constantly saying that, did you subscribe? Did you push the notification button? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I, if you didn't, shame on you because you're missing out on the good stuff. Right? You can always look at the back stuff because it's still on there on the playlist. Well, here we are. Oh, look, we walk right into... What is this? There's actually a, an open spot here on the floor. How did this happen? This is shocking. This is not common. You don't see this often in my place. There is one, two, three, four, five. This is a, uh, a nine squares. That's nine foot square of open floor space here at Randy Land, and, and there's nothing there. So I, I had to, oh, I, you know what it is? I know what it was. I had all my Christmas decorations there from the Main Street Omnibus, but I have de-decorated the Main Street Omnibus now, so the decorations are gone. I put them away for next year, so I have some actual floor space here. So this is pretty good. So now I get to see my merry-go-round rounding board. <laughs> well, this is the kind of thing that belongs hanging on a wall. There's actually hooks in it, eye hooks, that could hang it. It's not original with eye hooks. I mean, this isn't the type of thing you would hang. It's on, what is a rounding board? When you look at a merry-go-round, on the top, there's the crown that goes all the way around, and it's around, they're curved, and they usually have the lights on it and decorations, some mirrors here and there, depending upon how ornate the, the carousel is, how big the machine is. So those boards are cut round, and they create a circle between the sections. They're called rounding boards, and this is a rounding board. And it's an old one because it's wood, this is carved wood, this is not fiberglass or anything like that, this is carved wood, and um, it's not the most ornate one I've ever seen, but, you know, it's, it's pretty good, and I think, I can't imagine that they, they made it with um, galvanized steel back, you know, 100 years ago, so my guess is that this had to be rebuilt. Now, typically, a lot of these old merry-go-rounds, they got weathered, and the wood would become soft and, you know, fall apart. So probably, I'm guessing, they somebody along the line that restored this took off all the decorations, and the wood was soft behind it. So they, they made it strong again by putting a back of galvanized steel, cutting it to the, you know, the, the right shape, and then they reinstalled all the other parts so that it would hold together again. Let's see if I can see anything from the back here. It's got the original wood structure behind it, but the metal goes between the structure, so probably whatever plywood was originally there was just disintegrated and they chose to use metal. I mean, it could be original, but I don't know. Did they have galvanized steel back 100 years ago? I don't know. Well, we'll have to look that up because, you know, the internet will tell you everything. And you know it's right if you find it on the internet. You know it's absolutely right because somebody sometime wrote that in there and forever after it became gospel. This is the way it is. So many things are wrong that I find there and they, they come up with these dates. And I know that it's not right because I lived it. But now it's documented because it's on the internet because somebody wrote it there. So I don't know. But be that as it may, this is an old rounding board. Somebody hand carved these lovely little cherubs and the roses and the stems. And, and it's all wired with, you know, your old standard single strand wires behind it. A little mirror here. It's not big into mirrors. It could have had more mirrors. So it's not the most ornate one. But I love it anyway. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll say this. It's certainly more ornate and more beautiful to hang on a wall than the one you have, right? Right? Compare it to the one you have. 
So my rounding board is, is more unique than that. So not everybody has a rounding board. That's the point. So I love it for what it is. And the more ornate it would be, the higher value it would probably bring to collectors. This hasn't been refinished. It could be refinished by somebody who's going to, you know, get all the old paint off of it, all do it up nice again. It would come out beautiful. But, you know, to me, I love the old park paint. I just love old original stuff. Now, is that the original paint that they painted it 100 years ago? I doubt it. It's probably been painted over in its lifetime at whatever amusement park it was at. I got it from a collector out in California. I didn't go looking to buy a rounding board and pay to have a rounding board shipped here, but I bought some other things and he had the rounding board, so I was paying for a truck to come from California anyway. So I bought the rounding board. Doesn't it make sense? This is how you get stuff, stuff that I don't even know what's, you know, we just went through this with another video I did where I was moving some boxes and the boxes, I didn't even open them when I got them. I ordered stuff because it was available. I bought it when it was available. So that guess what? Someday I have it, I'm gonna need it. Well. Here we are, so here's my rounding board, and it's just sitting here because it's, it's hard to move by yourself, and it's in the way, so it's in a nice little spot here. So where, what's it leaning on? This is how you get into layers of stuff like this. It's leaning on my panel saw. Well, what's a panel saw? Did you ever go to Home Depot, and you get a piece of plywood, and you want them to cut it? They use a panel saw typically. So the panel saw, it goes from here to over here and they put the plywood on it and they set the saw up here. And you know, this is kind of something behind it here. I don't want to mess everything up, but this slides down and it turns. Let's see, I gotta find the releases here. There's one release and another release. See, it turns, well, I'm hitting something, there we go and it'll lock, lock in position so I can do a vertical cut. I can do a horizontal cut where you slide the wood across and it just cuts and you set it for whatever height that you want and there's actually measuring tape here. So as you slide it up and down, your pointer will go to whatever side you want and whatever size you want. Then you, you lock it in position by turning the handle so that it doesn't move, and then you move your wood through if you're going horizontally. Here I'm going vertically, so I'd move the wood under it, mar mark it on the bottom, and just slide it down. There's also a graduated ruler that's on the bottom, so if I'm going across, I wanna know the measurements of the wood. And this is how you cut nice, clean lines, all right? So, I always wanted a panel saw, because it's a pain in the neck. You go to Home Depot, they typically cut it for free, and it's easier to move the wood if it's cut. But then you gotta know exactly what size you want the wood when you go there. And then you gotta stand there and you gotta wait for the guy to come. And you're waiting and you're waiting and then you can't find anybody and then the guy who comes doesn't know how to do it. And, and or they'll tell you that he's not trained on the panel saw so he can't cut your wood. Or my favorite is, it's out of order, all right? And uh, that's because they don't want to be bothered with it. And this and Well, so I bought my own panel saw. Everybody should have one. So it's sitting here because I can easily drag the wood in. I can get it to the side. I can rip it across. I can do what I want. And that's why there's all this wonderful sawdust on top of stuff. You see this now? If you look closely, this is not sawdust. What is this? Well, I'll tell you what this is. See that? That's plastic, that's plastic dust. So I was cutting Lexand on my panel saw, you see? So when you cut Lexand, like for my windows or something like that, you can cut it just like wood. The only problem is Lexand is not as stable as wood. You know, like if you're cutting thin wood, this is not a good thing to cut. You wanna cut like plywood that's, you know, got some rigidity to it. Lexand, it's gonna bend. So when you press it in and it goes through the, through the saw, it's gonna push down between those rails which are gonna hold it and it is actually going to cause the Lexand to push away and you're not gonna get a good cut. So how do you cut Lexand on your panel saw then? 
you have to modify your panel saw. You see? But you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> it's designed for safety reasons. <sighs> I reversed the blade, okay? And I reversed the motion so that instead of the blade cutting that way where it's pressing it down against the frame and it's pushing it down into the, the groove here and bending it, I have it pulling it up. So it's pulling the material up against the plate itself, which then it can't go anywhere. It can't bend. So I can do it. Now that's not ideal for all applications. But for my purposes of what I was doing, I re-engineered it and made it go backwards. You see, this is why I'm Randy. I just do things to make them work. You have to make things work. If you have unlimited funds and you're a major company, you can send things out, you can have it done, you can buy equipment that's made to do that. But when you are the poor man's operation, the one man's show, you make it work. I wouldn't have anybody else work with my panel saw because I don't think that that's safe enough to do it that way. But for me, who's aware of what's going on and knows what's going on, I have no problem with it. And look, I still have all my fingers. Although, you see that? That's where a drill bit snapped off and went right through my fingernail and out the back of my finger. How's that for wonderful? This is when you get the quality drill bits, you see? And I buy only the best ones over at Harbor Freight. So once in a while, they will snap, even being the higher grade ones. And this is what happens. And, you know, I didn't even need a tetanus shot. People were saying on my social media, you need a tetanus shot. Well, I had a tetanus shot probably like 35 years ago. What do I need another one for, right? You know what's good about stuff like this? You can always judge it. If the blood shoots out like a fountain when you get injured, you don't need a tetanus shot because the blood is flowing out and it is cleansing the wound automatically. It's just shooting it out in all directions. And you're, you're, it's like if you hit a jugular vein, it's just shooting all over the place. It shoots for a couple feet like a fountain. You, I mean, it's great. So you don't have to worry about it. You get a paper towel, you wrap it around there real tight and you put some electric tape around it. And then before you pass out on the floor from the pain, it's usually taken care of. And if you're holding it tight enough, the blood is gonna stop. So this is now, it's about, about 10 days or something like that. And in another 10 days, I'll be back to normal again. You see? And then the finger can point at the, the camera and tell you what you're doing wrong. You see all that good stuff? Maybe it's time to leave it there and we'll see you next time from the Main Street Randyland Collection Series. You see? Baby's Collection. We'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you.